Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. It is League Unlock. We have returned Eric and Mark here with you beauties, and it is a beauty because we are treated to a Wednesday Hump Day special marquee matchup in the LPL. Of course, it is the winner's bracket final. BLG. I almost said JDG. BLG versus Top Esports, a rivalry we've become oh so familiar with in 2024. And I mean, they never really disappoint this matchup, even when sometimes it's a little more one-sided than you, than you might think it would be. But this one started with a bang and it ended with a bang. You're, you're too primed and ready for the gauntlet run. That's why you had JDG ah, yeah, on the mind. We're not there yet. We are still in that upper bracket, winner bracket situation between Top Esports and BLG. And yes, sir, we, we get treated with a little bit of League of Legends sweetness midweek from our LPL gods. And they deliver us a relatively solid series here. And when we say series, it is a series because we got to start in that first game where Top Esports finds a way to draw first blood against BLG. And we start firing on all cylinders because we get the Diana Yasuo combo out of BLG. But the problem is Tien Zyra pick is basically the perfect counter pick to this because anytime there was that Diana Yasuo wombo combo, Tien just simply drops the Zyra ulti right around them. And as soon as the Yasuo drops from the sky, he's dead. There's nothing he can do. She's such a great champion in that position because of what is available to her. She can be so annoying getting that long distance root off, slowing you as you're trying to make that engage on, onto a squishy or something like that. Then you got all the plants popping up and down, doing damage to you before you can even get to some of these situations, get to your target. And then to top it all off, say you do get to your target. You got to start to layer down the wombo combo. Hey, let me just put this big circle around me that's gonna have a big plant all of a sudden here that's gonna be knocking you through and doing some big time damage. Yes, the Zyra was a crucial pick as well. Crucial performances on top of esports in this first game to notice through. Gotta talk about your boy Cream in the mid lane, stepping up in the face of your boy Knight on the other side of BLG. Yeah, and even though it's been a couple of years since Knight was actually playing on top esports, it still feels like Cream is trying to prove that, you know, he can fill the shoes left by Knight, left by a guy like Rookie who was there just last year. But absolutely this year, he's done that time and time again. Case in point, this first game. So TES draws first blood. Game two, uh, Wei gets off of the Diana. He goes back to the more standard tanky piggy in the jungle and immediately he's running it down bot lane to help out his boys elk and on and they got ahead early and didn't really look back from there you had the uh seraphine bot for mako to counteract this incredibly aggressive Callista renata glask and it didn't work no no uh, not one little bit i appreciate the the effort the chance to try on something like this because i do think that there are avenues right now, and I think that's one of the things that hasn't been talked about enough, where Seraphine can fit into that meta, can find one of these positions, and still, yes, maybe not everybody's favorite champion, Sona 2.0 type of thing going on, whatever, but she has had some type of effect when you can bring her in creatively into a composition, so I like the, the risk, the gamble on it, definitely definitely did not pay off because you were right the the uh, uh Callista and renata combo just so oppressive on the side of blg and executed to perfection by elkin on and um you know cream had that great first game he has a couple of buster shots in this game on the cannon shooting them into the team in one team fight and Aww. letting guys survive so Better on the Corky than the Tristana. I, I think even those misplays aren't going to completely change the outcome of this game. This was very much a BLG in control, and it carried into Game 3. This is where the series kind of got off the rails because this was, oh, so sloppy for top esports in the third game. They're getting too aggressive, over-diving. You have multiple guys in multiple spots on the map just getting caught out multiple times throughout the game. This was their worst game of the series. Yes, this is one where 
you felt like, okay, the wheels are starting to fall off for top esports. Maybe, you know, it's, it's the effect of, you know, getting that big whack on the big boss and then they start stumbling around type of thing. That's how top esports felt in that uh, third game when we head into this set because you look through at what was going through on the side of BLG, stability, peace, comfort, thanks to Way in the jungle and how he was directing things and how he was moving through, whether he was actually making something happen in any of these lanes or if he was just there to, you know, kind of roll Patron through, maybe poke into a little bit of vision and say, hey, I'm in this area. You better keep yourselves under behavior watching through with my guys in their lane. And uh, again, bot lane got a lot of attention. Uh, On actually picked up the MVP in that third game. A lot of misfortune. I think every game this series, three of them were Jackie Love, but every game misfortune was getting picked. So that's kind of, who knows as we transition maybe a little away from these 80 carries in the mid lane, if we're going to be seeing more MF in that bot lane. But uh, game four, we move to match point now for BLG, and this looked like game three against Weibo. This was bloodthirsty from the very get-go. We're talking level one, and I feel like of any region, I bet you the LPL practices level one skirmishes like this in scrims. <laughs> I love it because it's the LPL mantra of, well, if I'm going down, I'm, I'm bringing you down with me, and either you're gonna come down and we're having that game five silver scrapes, or I'm just gonna fall down and, and and miss that grab, that last clutch clutch at your ankle type of situation. Top Esports throws everything at the wall, all they can. And when I mean all they can, I'm talking about all the deaths they can. They're throwing it at the wall. They're throwing it at the invulnerable machine that is BLG's night and bin, a controlling, commanding combo in this game. And you throw down some of that burn damage from your boy Way in this game as well. The big problems on the side of top esports have. And listen, the reality is TES continued playing sloppy in this game four, carried over from game three. It looked like this game was completely over. There's bad misfortune ulties throughout basically the oh. entire game, but then there's one team fight where Mako finds a good engage, they get a bit of a wombo combo, and they nearly ace BLG to get back into this game, and then they have to decide, they go Baron, or do they deny the Hextech soul? They deny the soul, then they go to Baron, and they end up losing a couple members, but it looked like there was maybe an angle where Top Esports got back into this game, but Knight was having none of it on this day. He finishes this game four. 0 and 5 on the Corky and absolutely takes over the final team fight of the game. Which, which number one, we got to mention, there is a, a, a glimpse, a glimmer of the unbelievable upset possible in this game because Mako, take a look at him in some of these last team fights and make sure you're checking on the angles that he's going in on. You got, you can combo that with a layered in right in there with a misfortune ultimate. You start slamming in all the other type of damage you got at the moment. But Jackie loves farming mid lane in the last team fight. Jackie loves farming mid lane. The unforgivable ADC sin not being there at the most crucial moment when your team needs that damage. That's the the cost. And, and as you already laid out, when the uh, opposing force consisted of Knight, of Way on that brand, of Bin dominating in the top side. It didn't matter that you looked at your bottom lane and went, wait, we got 20 combined deaths in our bottom lane? How are we still in this game? Uh, by the way, that last team fight, uh, I think Way is the first member of BLG to die. He does the most damage in the team fight. That's just brand things, baby. Oh my god. It, it was absolutely insane, and it's kind of well, uh, you'd look at these numbers in this series and you'd find them somewhere in the middle ground, but you'd have to understand, well, oh, we had we had Sejuani duty and then you throw in the brand, dishing out crazy damage like this. BLG comes away with a convincing win in this series, certainly one where they showed not only were they the better team on the day, they were the better prepared squad on the day that headed into all these matchups and were able to hold their mental fortitude, their game plan, everything throughout this, no matter what top esports threw their way. 
And how about, it, it just now feels like, the reason I almost mentioned JDG at the start of the show is because BLG has just come into that BLG or JDG big brother role and now keeps beating up on top esports just like they were beat up on by JDG last year. It seems so similar uh, across the way. Another final note on this series. We saw 369. The Mordekaiser pick was so pivotal in their last series was so terrifying. BLG doesn't even need to ban it. They say, we know this is your great counter pick against Cassante. So, Ben, just don't pick Cassante. Oh, man. It's it's, <laughs> it's 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 tough when they just say and they call you out in that type of situation. But that's kind of a great thing about a squad like BLG is that they are, frankly, cocky enough to take that bet, take that gamble on themselves and say, we know that you've got this thing. But are you gonna? Are you are you really thinking that you're gonna execute that? You're gonna have an advantage on this thing into us, and if we're gonna take certain steps, of course, like not picking the Cassante. Does your advantage matter anymore in this type of situation? BLG truly a masterclass, dominant form and and strong uh, handle on this LPL region. When you look through this roster course we've had so many conversations about knight and all the fantastic top end stuff that he brings but once again it is that backbone that raw strength of bin pushing this team across the finish line getting them through and keep on moving in this lpl territory and we got to take a look at what's happened over the last two two and a half years with bin the most the forgotten outcast, the exile from the RNG organization. And my man's living it up, yucking it up in paradise while he looks uh, over at RNG. RNG right now. What's RNG? I, I'm not familiar. Is that a team in the LPL? Yeah, to think I, we felt bad for Ben when he was initially on BLG saying, man, he's not on powerhouse RNG. Two oh, he doesn't later. get an MSI. He doesn't get an MSI trophy. Oh, no, no. All of a sudden, he's ripped a few LPL titles and, and not a world championship yet. But BLG looking in pretty fine form for that, of course. Going to Worlds now, guaranteed a top two seed. At worst, if they lose in finals, uh, they'll be going based on championship points. So we'll see them at the world championship. And not just Ben. How about two years ago-ish now, we were talking about Knight and Chovy saying, man, these guys, we're always talking about them. They're so good, but they just can't win. They always choke when it matters most. All of a sudden, Knight is going for his fourth LPL title in a row, two different teams across that stretch. Chovy's already won four LCK titles in a row. All these two guys have done since everyone was calling them out is win, 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 win. Oh, man, they're, they're, it, it's phenomenal to see this type of growth, this type of journey for these two players, you know, arguably... You know, you have these two front-running prospect potential greatest of all time type of players. How often do you get something like that and not realize that full potential, not get to that ultimate excellency of a superstar that you want to see, that you know is possible or capable for this individual? We are starting to see that with Knight and Chova, and you love to see that this comes through. Both of these players, so much talent, so much prospect, they didn't get to put it all together. Now you add in a fantastic so solid top laner for both of these options in keen and bin on both uh, on, on the teams respectively and then you go down to the bottom lane and you check in with elk and pays and check in on the damage that they're doing those are important things to look at but individually i think you can clearly see that confidence level and that winning formula has been understood by chovy and knight at this point to take themselves to that next level that clutch factor as well love to talk about the growth and journey for both of these two superstars already praying for a finals from msi rematch at worlds let's see chovy and knight throw it down again at this year's world championship uh top esports obviously still in losers bracket we're gonna be waiting for them to match up against the winner of weibo versus lng which gets going right away next day in the lpl it does not stop but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here are two absolutely wonderful people as always thanks for hanging out we'll catch you on that flippity flip